Hola, soy el Sena Sosa, and now we are talking about networking architecture, or network architecture for vSAN. And if you ever talk to a network engineer, or better yet, if you're a vSphere administrator or, v or storage administrator, and you talk to a network engineer, you know by now that they are the people that are the most intelligent, right? Well, at least that's what they think. Um, no offense to my peer network engineers. But the question is, how do we structure this, or you can talk to them so that they can provide the networking services that you require to have a functioning vSAN environment? So this is a recommendation that I can come up with uh, that can help you ask a few questions of the networking engineer so they know what to provide without you telling them what to do. Because God knows that the biggest thing you can do to a network engineer is to tell them what to do. You never do that. That's bad. So. This is uh, what you should do. First, let me explain what you would need, and then we'll go with the questioning. Uh, one thing you would need, and you, being a BSPI administrator, you should know that you need a management VM kernel port. That's, you need that, right? You need to connect to the host. And that's going to go to a port group. So when I say port group, think VLAN. Uh, Bmotion, you, you, you want your Bmotion, right? Uh, and you don't connect that to the same port group as a management VM kernel port. You could, but don't do it, right? So that's a different port group, right? VLAN again. Uh, if you're doing NSX, right? You're going to have your VXLAN VM kernel ports. Again, port group, right? And you might have uh, fault tolerance and so forth. But uh, because those, uh, I'm going to keep it simple, and you're going to add the next one, which is the vSAN VM kernel port. Again, another port group, right? And that's the stuff for the host. And now you're going to have one or more. Uh, if you have NSX, uh, you have a bunch of port groups, but that they won't be XLAN. Um, but you're going to have more and more gro uh, port groups, one or more, that are for your production stuff, right? The VM traffic, where you connect your VNX for the most part. And, and those port groups are going to connect, uh, strongly suggest you put that in, the, in a distributed switch. Um, the vSphere distributed switch has the way more networking features than the standard vSwitch. Um, the standard vSwitch would work, but you're going to be missing some stuff like uh, network I.O. and so forth. So you do that. Um, so we haven't connected this to anything yet, just the configuration. And this is what you do next. And, and I know it's challenging sometimes to come up with these numbers, but you need to get, kind of guesstimate of what it is. How much traffic? 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 Add all that traffic up. Then you take a single VM NIC, a physical interface on that host, and fit all that traffic into that single interface. That's how you do it. Um, if this is 800 meg, then this is 1 gig. If this is 3 gig, then this is 10 gig. If this is 15 gig, then this is 25 gigs, right? Uh, you could do 40, but yeah, stay away from 40. Not good. Or I don't recommend it. So. You do that, fill all that stuff in there. Now, one caveat. If this is 800 meg, you could put it on 1 gig, but if this is an old flash vSAN solution, this has to be 10 gig, no option. You have to go 10 gig, otherwise VMware would not, uh, does not support it. So you put it on one interface, period. Then you connect that to a single physical switch, right? which we like to call the top rack. Now, as you can see, we have single point of failures. And that's where the second NIC comes in. To a different topo rack switch, you don't want a single point of failure. So what you have with this design is that in case of a link failure, you do not have degradation, degraded performance when traffic fails over to the other link. You don't have that. If your business is struggling, uh, has a budget constraints and you cannot do this, then you might play other things. But then you have to document the fact that they might have degraded performance in case of a link failure. So there you have it, kind of what the design looks like, but by itself it's not sufficient. So what you want to do next is that you want to do this. LACP. But that presents a potential problem because you have two switches. And LACP doesn't work across two switches unless you lie to LACP and you create a multi chassis link aggregation in MLAC. Now you can do LACP. So, this is what the design should look like, or I recommend that it looks like this. So, how do I turn all this into questions? 
that I can ask the network team so they can provide the services that I need without us telling the network team what to do. So first question you ask for, you tell them. This is not more a question, this is more like this is my requirement. I need VLANs, right? One, two, three, you count how many VLANs you need. Uh, when you ask for VLANs, they're gonna come back and ask you about default gateways and subnets, right? Now, you don't come up with the subnets, they do. They own the ad addressing space. So you ask that question. Second question you say. Second thing, I need two times BMNIC. Is that 10 gig, 25 gigs? You say you need two. With hardware redundancy. Two topo racks. You tell them that. And they will know what to do. So you say I need two BMNICs going to different switches. That's it. And they have to be 10 gig. Then you ask this. I need link aggregation, LACP. The moment you tell them this, they know they have to provide you this. And there you have it. Also, when you tell them this, they know that all, you have to tell them all these VLANs have to be reachable through the LACP so they can trunk the VLANs there. Finally, or not finally, but in addition, I'm sure there's something back in my head that's not coming out right now. Um, there is always a question about MTU. I'm gonna put a note here as number five, QoS, and I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, there is a question about NTU. Should I keep it at 1500 default or should I make it a jumbo frame? Jumbo frame is anything bigger than 1500. So it turns out that for vSAN, uh, vSAN doesn't care. It works more or less the same whether you're doing 1500 or 9000, which is the most that the BDS can do. So you don't care for vSAN purposes. However, there might be virtual machines that care. Bmotion can perform better, right? Because it will perform faster. Uh, BX landing requires, uh, for NSX, it requires 1550 jumbo, uh, jumbo frame, but you go with 1600 anyway, just in case. Uh, that's being where's recommendation. So what you do is, since it doesn't matter for vSAN, just request 9000 jumbo frame. It doesn't hurt anything, and you just have it. It really does not hurt anything. So, oops, sorry, wrong window. That meant to be right here. Uh, although that you configure there. Now, for the QoS, oh, 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 something. Something else for LACP, I'm gonna put it here since I kind of made a mess right here. Uh, for the LACP, there is something called the hashing algorithm. Basically how egress traffic is gonna go out. Because vSAN is gonna have one being kernel port, talking to a lot. Uh, the best way to use the LACP is to do a hash of an IP hash. Um, the network team, if they ask you, you say, hey, IP hash works. They probably work anyway. Whatever hash they have in the ingress doesn't affect what you configure on the egress. So IP hash for LACP. Finally, for QoS. For the most part, you will need QoS unless this link right here, or both of them, are heavily utilized, which is causing buffering problems over here on the physical switches. That's where QoS will come in, when too much stuff is coming in and something has to wait. If you require QoS, you need to talk to the network team to ask them what Class of servers, that's layer two. Do I need to use for management, vMotion, BXLAN, and so forth? Actually, for BXLAN, that will be inherited from whatever the VM is sending. For vSAN, because it's a storage traffic, chances are pretty good that they're gonna give you a cost of three. That's usually reserved for storage traffic, like our channel rate the NATO is causing, right? Especially if they're doing data center region there. For the layer three, uh, which is the DSCP, uh, for that one, they will give you by number that, uh, they might not need to give you the number, sorry, because usually that DSCP parking happens here. Um, for the most part, that's kind of it for the network design. If you go with something like this, you are extremely likely guaranteed that you have a performing network that will meet the requirements for vSAN. Um, one more thing before I, uh, we close out the video. Um, the uplinks here, if this is a vSAN uh, hybrid, I'm sorry, an old flash, if this is 10 gig, this uplinks have to be 10 gig or higher. Hopefully it will be 100 gig if available, but 40 would do. Anything that is higher, you want it to go up uh, because vSAN requires the 10 gig for the old flash from end to end, and that has to do with something called port to port latency, right? The speed has to be quick. And this is kind of a very high level network architecture for vSAN. I want to thank you all for watching. I am Elver Sena Sosa. Have a lovely day.